what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Horror Movie Review with Daniel Richardson. I'm, wait for it, Daniel Richardson. And uh, yes, we're back after a couple of weeks. Um, I want to apologize. I didn't really give anybody any kind of warning or anything. We have recently moved. And as you can see, there's a slightly different setup here. Uh, but yeah, TPS Productions and ourselves have moved. And uh, yeah, and that was a couple weeks ago, and then last week was Labor Day weekend, and we just kind of figured, like, you know what, we'll start fresh on the next one. Now, with that being said, I don't know how this video is going to turn out, and I apologize in advance. Uh, the dishwasher is going off right now, and it was like, I got you this video tonight. Uh, no time. Uh, and so I, it, it's going on the background. I don't know how loud, it doesn't seem like it's too loud, but I don't know how it's going to come on here. I don't want to wait. I just don't want to wait. So, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into this freaking review. Uh, I promise this will be the last time that the thing is going off if it's horrible. Uh, so, bear with it in this episode, please. Uh, so, let's get into it. Now, um, we got some horror movie news this past week. S slightly eventful, I guess. Uh, the big thing, uh, obviously, Nev Campbell has just joined the cast of Scream 5. She joins uh, the returning cast of David Arquette and uh, Courtney Cox. Um, and Kevin Williams, I think, is uh, attached as an executive producer. I'm not sure exactly, you know. And I think they even said that, uh, oh, what's her name? Mary Shelton? Is that her? She was in Grindhouse also. I think she's on the Bumble Planet Terror I think she was, you know, she was the deputy uh, Dewey's kind of weird, the hell was that? Uh, like, you know, his weirdly kind of obsessed deputy, I guess, in uh, part four. I, I hear she's coming back, too. But anyways, uh, yeah, they got the entire cast, which, once again, I, not to sound like a dick, but it's like, they never doing anything. And I just couldn't imagine any of them saying no. But they all kind of said the same thing. They're like, you know, they didn't really want to come back because, you know, Wes Craven was dead, which is completely understandable. But they're all like, yeah, you know, this script's really good. And I'm thinking, you know, you guys came back for part four, and that script sucked, in my opinion. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm down for it, once again. Uh, I'm, I'm all good for it. I, I really hope this is just balls to the wall insane. Like, I, I just want it to be really good and crazy. But, you know, I'll wait and see. But Scream 5, boom, right there. Um, it was announced that the final season of The Walking Dead Season 11 is coming up, uh, but they're, it's going to be one season over the course of two years. Isn't that just two seasons? What the fuck? Uh, and they're like, it's a, 20, it's a big, epic 24-episode season. I'm like, you know, back in my day, I have a grandpa here, uh, literally 24 episodes was like a standard season. That's a regular season, and you did that in one year. And not even a whole year, you did like within the course of like seven months. Crammed all that shit in there, took the summer off. Here, it's like, you know they're going to have mid-season breaks, they're going to fucking do an episode, and then like every two or three weeks, I mean, they'll probably have to just do one, probably one a month. I guarantee it's what's going to be like, or else I'll milk it that fucking much. And I was like, well, it's their cash cow. Of course they're going to milk it. But they're not losing anything, because it was also announced that, in addition to Fear of the Walking Dead, which I believe is on their fifth season now, uh, they had a third show, which I'm not sure if they even started Air, or uh, they started filming on it because I know COVID kind of threw everything out of whack. World Beyond, I think is what it's called. Or, I don't know. There's a, there's a third Walking Dead show out there, the second spinoff. There's going to be yet another spinoff with Daryl and Carol. And I'm thinking, like, so you're telling me they're not going to die at the end of season 11, huh? Like, that is kind of, you know, a day we get, like, Glint in this one. They're going to, you know, you know they're going to make it at least. So any scenes where Daryl or Carol are facing any kind of peril, just know if there's any Daryl peril or Carol peril, as it's fun to say, uh, they're fine. Nothing's going to happen to them, but guess what? They're not going to die. They got a spinoff coming. Jesus Christ. And then I want to say I read somewhere else, too, that there's a plan for like maybe yet another spinoff, where it's mostly going to be an entire show. It's going to be more anthology, where like any loose plot points or early standalone shows. I don't know. Like each like Twilight Zone style. Like, you know, every episode's gonna be its own standalone show or whatever, but it takes place within the universe of The Walking Dead. 
which I just, I've only seen one season, and I thought it was okay, but then I heard season two got boring, and I just didn't want to watch anymore. And then it's like it's, it's like Game of Thrones, like everybody's bitching about it. As it, the, the longer it went on, everybody's just crying about it. And I'm just like, I don't need to watch this. And I just didn't. Uh, that was it right there. Um, so this past weekend, uh, Tenet came out, uh, the new Christopher Nolan movie. And it wasn't enough, though, to take that. I didn't realize this. But Halloween, the Rob Zombie remake of Halloween, holds the Labor Day uh, box office record of like $50 million opening weekend or whatever. And Tenet could take it down. Now, granted, there should be a, a slight asterisk because obviously COVID, he was only able to break in $20 million. But also, I kind of say bullshit for that only because COVID actually pushed it back to Labor Day. It's supposed to come out like two months ago, I think, or maybe even earlier now, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, but I was looking at it, I was like, I didn't realize Halloween, like, an old, older movie, too, like, I think, what was that, 07, 08, it was 07, 07, it's like, Halloween, Rain Champ of Labor Day, who would have thought, I don't know, I thought that was kind of interesting myself, and then finally, uh, there was a, uh, little, uh, podcasts or blurb, I don't know, I, I read the article on Blade Disgusting, but apparently uh, really Scott's talking about doing another Alien movie, he, or he wants to do another Alien movie, and apparently, I guess, there was plans to do a third movie in the Prometheus trilogy, if that's what you want to call it, because uh, the second one was, uh, there's Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and then there's going to do uh, Alien Awakening, I think is what the, the, the third trial is going to be called, but with Covenant underperforming, which I like Covenant. I thought it was a really good movie, but whatever. Uh, they got gun shy and they just pulled it away. However, uh, he's still like, I don't know what we're going to do another movie, another alien movie. I think we're done with the trilogy. I got another story to tell. I was just like, really? You're just going to fucking throw in the towel on this? Like, I just feel like the Prometheus trilogy, as much as I like it, it does just seem like, I don't know, he's bending to the critics or the studio too much. I don't know. Uh, I feel like Prometheus is fucking great until they just try to tack on. And it has always a point. I don't know. And I feel like maybe that was the point. Like maybe he was always meaning it to be an alien tie-in. But the fact that they called the next one Alien Covenant and not just Covenant or Prometheus 2 tells me that no, the studio's like, oh, you need to call Alien and feature more alien-esque aliens in it. I don't know. I just feel like he, he had a movie in mind with Prometheus, and then the studio was like, oh, no, you need to have aliens in it. If you're going to have this little, you're on tiptoe around, we ain't doing that shit, you're going to literally have an obvious tie-in to it. And I, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like, I want to say, I don't know. I feel like he's Ridley fucking Scott. Let him do his own shit. But anyway, I just think it's funny that he's just like, he's all gung-ho about his Prometheus trilogy. And as soon as they back out, he's like, well, I'm not doing that. I'll do something else. I'll do anything. Let me, let me just make a movie. I don't give a fuck what I make. And it's just like, really? But um, the funny thing is, is Walter Hill apparently been writing the script for part five, and he was trying, or, you know, the Alien 5, or maybe Alien 2, because I guess they're going to, like, drop out 3 and 4. I don't know what they're going to fucking do. But, like, he's already been, like, pitching that to, like, Sporting Weaver. It's like... He really just got to say shit about that, so it makes you wonder, like, is he even in the loop anymore? Like, ah, Alien. It's a, it's a fun franchise at this point. Just, there's so many fucking movies out there. But, okay, you know what? It takes place in the multiverse. Every one of these movies, you know, we don't need to keep, we keep splintering it up. I just decided that every franchise that keeps getting rebooted, it's like, it's all in the same time, or it's all in the same world. It's just different timelines. I just feel like it's the only way I can really be happy with all these ridiculous restarts and reboots and well, we're going to do a direct sequel to the first one because we don't know we're not smart enough to try to actually pick up the franchise and make it good. Like, that's fucking talent. You've got to get paid millions of dollars out there. Actually try to make a movie encompass everything. It's easy just to ignore everything else and be like, eh, reset button, let's just make a direct sequel. That's, that's fucking that's cheap, guys. It's fucking cheap. You're better than that. So anyways, but yeah, so Alien 5, really, or uh, another Alien, whether it's Part 5 or... The next Prometheus, or just some standalone fucking alien movie that he's just like, eh, really Scott really wants to know. So there you go. Uh, so guys, uh, we got we're on the the horror villain battle royal. Uh, we're down to the, the last five. We got Annabelle, the Thing, 
Count Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, and The Mummy. And I was really shocked by this one. Everybody voted. Dracula's out. Dracula's out. He was on the cusp last time, actually. And the wolf man got taken out. So Dracula's out. Uh, no one really wrote, like, a reason. They just put the thing in there. And I'm like, it's fucking Dracula. So I'm sure, like, sunlight, fucking steak and heart, garlic in the eye, fucking holy water. But I don't know. He, he got fucked up somehow. He has a lot of weaknesses. It doesn't take much to kill Dracula. So, you know, Dracula's out. So that's it. We're down to the final four in this battle. We start with ten. And, and I'm not gonna lie, the fact that the two non-universal monsters are still in it, or villains are still in it, blows my fucking mind. It's Annabelle, the Thing, Frankenstein's monster, and the Mummy. So guys, you're voting for who you want to be eliminated next. Who's gonna be taken out? Annabelle, the Thing, Frankenstein's monster, or the Mummy. Your choice, guys. It's your choice. But right now, we got something else to do. We're going to be doing our review. Did I mention what we're doing the review of? Did I just jump into this? I just jumped into this. You guys see the, 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 the title, though. That's the great thing about YouTube. You don't just go into a video completely uh, unaware of what's going on. Guys, we're going to be hitting up. It came out two years ago, I think. Uh, well, I think maybe, maybe it came out last year, but it was like May 2018. Because IMDb had it ranked at 2000, uh, had listed as 2018. I think it came out last year, didn't it? Like, it fucking matters. I'm talking about The Meg. That's right, Jason Statham, where a group of uh, scientists encounter a huge megalodon. And shark shit happens. That, that's the synopsis, shark shit happens. Um, and so, I mean, it just goes about saying, I don't know, I just, I, I've mentioned it before, and I'll, I'll say it again. Like, I just, I get, I'm terrified of, like, underwater horror, but especially fucking sharks. Like, I can't explain it. I've never encountered sharks. I've never, you know, been... But for some reason, just, I don't know, it's just years of watching movies. But it's like, it's intensified the older I get. Like, is that fucked up or what? Like, 20 years ago, when I was in high school or whatever, I never would have been like, oh, yeah. oh 20 years ago, I would, been, I would have been in grade school. What am I talking about? No, 20 years ago, I would have been, I would have been in high school. Yeah, it's 2020, isn't it? Yeah, year 2000, I would have been in high school. Old age to get to me. Yeah, but I mean, I would have been, I was never that scared of shark movies then. I was able to watch Deep Blue Sea and fucking Jaws and Jaws 2. Jaws 3. Yeah, point is, there ain't a whole lot of shark movies back then. It's like we got a, a huge glut of them now. But never flinched when I watched it, never kind of like, uh, and now it's like, oh, I throw a shark movie in, it's just like, I don't know, man, I'm like paralyzed with fear, and I don't want to look at the screen, because I just know a shark's going to fucking come at you. The Shallows, I will maintain, is probably the scariest movie that I've seen as an adult. Like, it's the one that would terrify me. Like, if I look like, on a massive big screen right in front of me, I'd just be like, oh, fuck. Like, the opening sequence, just the GoPro, the scene of the GoPro, and the kids on the GoPro. And you see that shark just merge and fucking come out of the camera and all that. I shit myself every goddamn time. And I know the scare jump scare is coming. I know the jump scare is coming. And the Meg was kind of like that too because I watched it uh, when Batman came out. I did watch it. And uh, I didn't find it nearly as terrifying as like 47 meters down. Which that movie, the storyline was stupid. But the jump scares were very effective. If that makes sense. I, I wasn't too big on the, the storyline with that one. and Or just the kind of stupid fucking progression of that movie or the ending. Uh, but the jump scare still made me shit myself. Uh, the Shallows, once again, scary shit. Uh, this movie, I found it more fun. Like, it feels more like a fun adventure. I mean, it really is like a big blockbuster horror film, I guess, in the vein of Jaws or whatever, even though it doesn't quite hit the mark of Jaws. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I watched it, and it still had a few scenes. Like, the, the scene it still got me. It's in the fucking trailer when the little girl is looking out that big fucking window and the shark like bites onto the fucking, you know, thing. And it's just like, holy shit. And like, I jumped in the trailer and then when the movie comes on, I jump during the movie. It's just like, fuck me. And it still has a few scenes like, you know, there's just little minor jump scares in there. But like, man, it gets me every goddamn time. Like when Jason Statham's like floating in the water, he's got to swim out and then the shark disappears. And he keeps doing his thing where he keeps dipping his head down there. And I'm just like, you know the shark's going to be there. During one of these dips, he's going to dip down and shark going to be right there. And sure enough, it happens, and I jump like a little bitch, and, you know, 
world keeps spinning. Um, I like this movie. Uh, honestly, I have the same frustrations that a lot of people seem to have with this. Uh, just in the sense that, I guess the book, I never read the book. I hear the book is pretty gory. And even Jason Statham and the other cast members said that, like, when they signed out for this movie, it was supposed to be like this hard R, fucking gory, fun horror film. And then Steel is just like, nah, we're making a PG 13. We're going to make it fun for the whole family. And in doing so, I feel like they definitely, like, the, the, the scene that I was looking forward to, and I'll call it the Piranha scene. I love, in the 2010 Piranha movie, the massacre at the lake when just the piranhas cut loose and it's just like I don't know, ten minutes of uninterrupted goriness, just fucking carnage. And I love that. I and I'm just like and I knew we weren't gonna get anything on that level because it was PG thirteen. But like the scene where he when the Megalodon is actually like flying to like this little bay area and all these fucking uh people are out there and you're just like, oh shit. Like, he's going to fuck some shit up, and he really does it. Like, he bites one guy in a big bouncy ball, and maybe he chomps a couple other people. But, like, for the most part, it's like he's knocking rats over, and then he hears the uh, the echo, the, uh, what do you call that? The, the sonar? He hears the fucking whale recording. I'm sorry, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but he hears the recording, and he, you know, he hears, but it's just like, dude, you had so much... Insanity in that one scene, potentially, that just gets wasted. And I'm like, you can do it bloodless. I mean, I don't recommend it, but you can still do it bloodless. Just him chomping motherfuckers. Him just, you know, quick snack. But he's like, you didn't do that. I don't know. I was I was highly disappointed by that. Um, but, you know, what other movie you're going to see where uh, Jason Statham fucking flies at a giant shark and, like, harpoons him in the fucking eye. Like he kills a, you know, with a harpoon, yes, but, like, he's out of the sub. Like, it's, it's, it's man versus shark for one scene, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, it's cheesy at times, but it's like, I love it. Jason Statham plays it great. Uh, the, you know, supporting cast is really good as well, uh, especially, like, uh, Dwight Schrute. What's his Rain Wilson, that's it. Uh, Rain Wilson's fun in it. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a fun movie. It really is. Uh, but, like I said, I just feel like oh, it could have been so much more. It really could have been. Uh, but that's what I don't. I don't want to say too much because I'm I don't want to give a whole lot away. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that's my review. Uh, the effects are pretty good, I think. I guess another thing I'll give it like I don't know. I watched Underwater. I think I actually reviewed Underwater on this channel. And uh, Underwater, uh, I thought the effects were complete dog shit. Like it just uh, in certain scenes, some scenes that look good, but then a lot of it just looked bad. And I just remember thinking, like, uh, and this one's the opposite. Like, I guess this one was real. I mean, in my opinion, I think it looks really good. Uh, the CGI is so much better here. I'm assuming the CGI. Maybe they did get a giant Megalodon to, you know, go out there. But anyways, uh, so, yeah, CGI is good. Acting's good. The story, I mean, it's fun. It's a fun movie. I feel like that's the thing, though. This isn't breaking new ground in horror. It is like a big popcorn blockbuster adventure horror film type thing. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, let me know what you guys think. You know, do you guys like the Meg? Was you a fan of it? If you liked it, why did you like it? If you didn't, why don't you like it? Uh, drop all those comments down below. Hey guys, that's all I got. Uh, sorry again for the dishwasher. It's now off, I think. Uh, if you could hear it, if not, it doesn't matter. Uh, but that's all I got. Thank you so much, and catch you next time. Oh, shit. Did I always run? Sorry. Hi, thank you for watching that video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to our channel. All that good stuff you do right here on YouTube, go ahead and do it. Uh, check out our other videos. Go to our playlist. We've got episodes of TPS TV, Journey Through the Dark Side. We've got a new show coming out, The Horror Movie Review with Daniel Richardson. This guy. Uh, and, of course, uh, our short film, Entropy. You can find all that and more right here on YouTube. And then check out, yeah, look at that. All of our uh, social media right there. Uh, and we don't just, you know, copy and paste like the same post and put it on all. No, that's ridiculous. Three different platforms, three different posts. I mean, the behind the scenes stuff you see on Twitter will not be the same stuff you see on Instagram. So there you go, right there. So be sure to get on, give us a follow and a like on all that right there. Keep up to date. Uh, have you seen Unsequel Acts yet? 
No, come on. Pick you up the DVD right now. Link's over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's only $7. $3 shipping and handling. Uh, and, of course, if you've already seen it and you haven't seen the uh, Public Domain Dungeon yet, boom, $5 DVD right there. So, 5 S&P as well. Or, sorry, 3 S&P as well. Uh, so, there you go. You can do that. And if you got the spare change, you want to hit us up, you know, donate a little bit over here to TPS Productions. Our Patreon is right there. Oh, yeah. So, that's all we... <laughs> Oh my God! Sorry, I'm very. I'm getting fired, ain't I? God, that's all we got. Thank you for watching.